Kisaklin, you're the Secretary General of the IMO. Thank you very much for being with us. Now, a number of different stakeholders have actually criticised the IMO for not working fast enough. How do you respond to that? Uh, I have to say, first of all, IMO community is a highly committed to tackle climate change issues. This year, the IMO adopted a speed optimization measure, which is called uh, EEXI, and second one is uh, carbon intensity index development. And also there is a carbon index rating system. Rating system is an unprecedented scheme in IMO convention system, in IMO history. It can be utilized by private sectors to stimulate the decarbonization. By 2023, according to our 2018 initial policy, we are going to upgrade our like, ambition, target, and also we are going to adopt the further measure to tackle climate change issues. So we are very much on the right track. Because of course the, the IMO is an almost unique organisation, isn't it, with that kind of global uh, responsibility and having to put rules in place right around the world. That brings some real challenges, doesn't it? Yes, that's true. IMO comprised of 174 member states, different from one single company, different from one single regional organization. So we need a consensus among member states. That means it takes more time. So how do you make sure then that everybody is brought along, that nobody's left behind? One, mutual understanding. And the second one, uh, mutual collaboration. And third one, we have to provide support to those developing countries. It should be no one left behind. That's why always we uh, emphasize important value of a communication collaboration. We cannot push a member state to follow a certain direction. We have to always maintain communication and uh, dialogue. So what do you think the most important technological changes will be that will bring around decarbonization? Technological development is very related to the alternative future fuels, which need a lot of research and development work. We have to utilize the technology developed onshore, how to apply this one to the maritime sector. And also we have to think about the more about the new propulsion system of ships, artificial intelligence and automation all taking place at the same time. In the end, we will have a totally different type of fuel oils and the propulsion design of ships. The word challenge has cropped up quite a few times in the interview already. Um, and a lot of businesses will regard challenges primarily as being expensive. Uh, but do you think that there are genuinely opportunities for business as we go through this process? Always an opportunity come along with a risk. But we have to see the, the optimistic side. We have to utilize these kind of development to help our the environment, help our industry as well. We have to be close to each other have a more conversation and the collaboration toward our common target. So what then do you think that the IMO needs to do to speed up the process? One of the key elements is actually research and development on alternative future fuels. This is key. Without that one, we cannot meet our target. That's why we are expediting our activities, the work uh, regarding uh, future fuels. So this is the uh, most important uh, element, but uh, we need a certain like uh, financial resources to do that. So I am always working on that element uh, as well. And lastly, if I may, as well as being Secretary General of the IMO, you're also a human being. Are you optimistic that enough is being done quickly enough? to mitigate the worst effects of climate change? Yes, I'm very much optimistic uh, about our progress, but in terms of the uh, pace 
of our progress is very much depending upon our effort. That's why I'm emphasize importance value of our conversation, dialogue, communication among member states together with industry. But the overall, we will make a progress as expected to tackle climate change issues. Secretary General, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.